SECA members and friends. My name is Tobias Gieser. I'm Global Head Structuring and Partners Group and a member of SECA's legal and tax chapter. On behalf of my legal and tax chapter colleagues, I'm happy to introduce you to a new series of short form videos. With such videos, we cover areas and topics we consider of particular interest to our audience. Today, we start with a glance at private debt. I'm pleased to welcome Stefan Kübler, who is a private debt investment professional at Partners Group. Stefan, many thanks for joining and spending a few minutes with us. First I of all, a question um, that's probably relevant for many of us and, uh, and, and even then beyond also um, professionals who do work with private debt. How would you describe private debt actually to someone who is not familiar with private markets investments? I think uh, first, first and foremost, Tobias, thanks for having me. Um, pleasure. Um, I think I would describe private debt very simply. It's, it works very similar as a commercial banking business actually. So we receive money from our clients, we lend it to companies, we receive interest and after a few years we get our principal back. So what actually makes private debt different compared to a commercial banking business? On the one hand side, it's uh, the risk appetite. So uh, commercial banks, especially since the financial crisis in 2008, have been heavily restricted um, or even he heavily discouraged to lend to companies, especially risky companies, which are um, highly indebted, have high leverage. So there, there was a lot of white space actually for private debt to grow into during the last 10, 15 years. And on the other hand, private debt providers also argue um, they can offer faster execution, a faster process and more flexible terms. That sounds uh, actually not as complicated as many of us uh, would have thought. Thanks for this um, 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 start. So, but then if we compare and there we hear different um, stories and backgrounds, uh, to what extent would you say is the private debt market different in Switzerland if you compare it to Europe and then certainly also globally? Um, because I assume you have a global focus uh, in, your, in your daily business life. Correct, we have a pan-European focus and when I compare the Swiss market to the, the largest markets and the most developed private debt markets in Europe, which is the, the UK, but also France and to a certain extent also Germany, Nordics and Benelux, then the Swiss market is still relatively small. And that's due to two main reasons. On, on the one hand side, private debt presence is usually strongest in markets with a lot of private equity activity because private debt is usually or its USP is to finance companies with high leverage, high indebtedness, because that's where the banks actually are not keen to lend anymore. And on this on this side, actually, Switzerland, Switzerland's private equity market is not as active yet, especially relatively compared to a market like the UK or France, where private equity activity is extremely high. And on the other hand, in Switzerland, the commercial banks are, are still very strong commercial banks, there, there are many commercial banks and they can offer or are able to offer very attractive conditions, especially for low to moderate leverage levels. Just a follow-up question. I mean, it's interesting what you say about the Swiss market. Uh, looking at the many uh, venture activities and venture capital uh, currently being raised in Switzerland, do you think that over time we will see a more mature private equity market in Switzerland um, and as such then also a resulting in more private debt activity in Switzerland? It, it could definitely be the case. I think in Switzerland you have many companies with very attractive characteristics for private equity companies. Also, when, when looking like many, there are many Swiss companies operating in niches and being actually global market leaders. So, and, and many of these companies will also look for, for a successor over the next 10, 20 years. So I, I could actually imagine there's, there's a good chance of having more private equity activity in Switzerland going forward. And usually when you have more private equity activity, we have seen it in other markets. Um, there is a high chance that some of this activity will also be financed with private debt providers. 
Interesting. And maybe sticking to opportunities and trends, an obvious question at these days, um, anything of particular um, um, interest now in the in the COVID-19 uh, situations? Or do you see, as it relates to private debt, any particular new trends or opportunities um, currently going on? I, I would actually argue that COVID is, is beneficial for private debt, because on the one hand side, it, it it will likely further accelerate the trend from bank lending to private debt lending because banks were the ones who had to step in actually in the last months um, to provide a lot of liquidity in the market. So banks had to increase their exposure to companies um, significantly, um, even though mostly state uh, uh, guaranteed by the governments. But still, there is a chance actually that banks will further right size or readjust their loan portfolios, which offers further opportunities for private debt providers to step in. And on the other hand, I think especially in the large cap space, companies or private equity sponsors usually face two options, basically going down uh, the syndicated route in the syndicated market, where basically a bank underwrites a syndicated loan and afterwards places it with many um, smaller smaller investors or going down directly the private debt route with just a few providers or a, or a club of banks. And the, the first option, option, the syndicated loan is usually quite attractive in, term, uh, in terms of terms, pricing. But the, although the bank underwrites these loans, it, it, it still is subject to pricing uncertainty because it's subject to the, to the market demand in the end. So there could actually be a good chance that more large cap companies or sponsors will decide to go for a private debt option in the first place because the syndicated loans, even though terms might be attractive, is still subject to market volatility, which uh, has, has remained actually elevated since the COVID crisis. So, so in that respect, not only looking at Switzerland, but generally speaking, and the future is bright for uh, for private debt. And then maybe lastly to end, I mean, is there any, I mean, next to what you already alluded to and uh, and, and told us, um, any interesting fact in general about private debt uh, you would want to share with us? I think what I found ex extremely interesting was in a recent Financial Times article, which actually stated that nowadays in the, in the global fixed income market, more than 60% of, of the market actually yields below 1% for investors. And um, while it was, uh, I think like in the, in the late 1990s, still roughly 75% of the market yielded more than 5%. So there, there was actually uh, driven by the central banks and the financial crisis, there was a very strong shift uh, towards this low interest environment. And I think that's where private debt offers also for on the client side, great opportunities because private debt offers you the opportunity to earn, uh, to earn returns of five to 10% or for, for some mezzanine instruments, even more um, for, for a debt instrument. That is indeed an interesting fact. Stefan, I would like to thank you for your time. Uh, stay safe and healthy. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks a lot.